Welcome to Corrections Mama 27 channel. So today I want to talk about the different types of inmates that you come across when you work at the prison. So I saw a video that Jay Williams put out that gave me the idea that I should do, he was doing the different kind of kinds of officers that you come across. I'm going to talk about the different kinds of inmates that we come across. So a shout out to Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, his channel. And um, Jay Williams is a great guy. This is not a beef with him or anything like that. I like Jay Williams, he's helped me out. And so I thought maybe this would be kind of a fun video to do. And um, I have a lot of respect for him because he's turned his life around, which is what we hope that all inmates do, that they turn their life around and live their life in a way that's positive, that gives back to the communities. So um, my channel is about the other side of the fence. His channel is about the inmates perspective. Mine is about the officer's perspective. Officers face flack from staff, from inmates, from administration, from family, from sometimes the community. And, you know, oftentimes officers get a bad reputation because of a lot of people just don't understand what we do when we're there. They think all officers are bad, that we all are dirty, that we beat up inmates and things like that. Look. I'm not saying that stuff doesn't happen. The Department of Corrections is oftentimes referred to as the Department of Corruption, which I agree with. The department is corrupt, but you have a good, good officers and bad officers. You know, just like in any job, you have poor employees and good employees. That depends on the person and what they're going through at the time and why they choose to do the dumb things that they do. So I talk about dumb things inmates do, dumb thing officers do, and dumb things administrators do. And I also gonna talk about dumb stuff I do or have done. Mistakes that I've made, disciplinaries that I've gotten in trouble for. I'm not trying to hide anything. I'm not perfect. None of us are. So anyway, th that's it. Let's get into it. Um, the number one I want to talk about is the angry inmate. All right, some of these inmates come in angry at the world for whatever reason, because of their past, they felt like they were dealt um, bad cards in life, you know, and this, this guy, these guys are always mad at the world. They take no accountability for what landed them in prison to start with. They blame everybody but themselves. They refuse to admit anything that they did was wrong. They feel like, you know, a lot of inmates will say, well, you know, I was brought up on these bunk charges and I didn't even do that and it wasn't even me. But if you ask them, they've lived a criminal life. And so you ask them, well, how many times did you commit crimes that you never got caught for? And they'll tell you, oh, a lot, a lot. Okay, well, don't you think you ought to take it in stride that you got busted for something, whether you feel like you did it or not, you still deserve the time because apparently you've committed many crimes to your own admission that you never got in trouble for. And this is often the times the way it is. These guys commit tons and tons of crimes, do a lot of shady stuff, hurt a lot of people, steal from people, whatever, drugs, and it go, the list goes on and on. But they never, a lot of times they don't even get caught for it. It's not reported. And they just keep going on committing these crimes. And eventually one day it catches up with them. So, you know, I feel like taking it stride, you know, unless you're really an innocent man or woman and you haven't lived a life of crime and you get convicted. Well, that happens sometimes too, but those people usually aren't that bitter. So anyway, these guys are very bitter and they're angry they always call uh, at every opportunity they call officers names they curse you out when you're down to run they're very confrontational they're always looking for something to get you on or to yell at you about or to tell you what you're doing wrong and um they also want to challenge the rules 
and uh, they want to challenge the rules and policy and they just look for every opportunity to trick, trip up, or be angry with the officer. And they're usually pretty confrontational. And sometimes when you're just walking down the road doing a security check, you're not saying nothing to them or bothering them. They still got something to say. They still got something rude and ugly to say. And this inmate is just like this all the time until one day there's a shift that happens. And I've seen it happen a couple of times where they have some kind of shift within themselves. And then one day they'll come up to, to me and say, you know what, I was a real asshole and I'm sorry. You know, maybe they found God or maybe they just finally realized that they're an a-hole. So it happens, uh, it's pretty rare, but it does happen. So you just gotta move forward and keep walking. Pretty much don't take their comments and their uh, bad behavior personal. It's uh, a battle they're having within, within themselves. Inside themselves, they're having this, this uh, war. And it spills out over on you. So you just have to brush it off, you know. Like a duck, a duck on a, with water on its back. Just let it roll off. You cannot take these things personal because these people... These inmates oftentimes come in messed up. They come in with mental illness. They come in with baggage. They come in with problems. They're hurt. They're angry. So whatever it is, it don't make it right what they're saying or doing to, to me. I'm just doing my job and earning my check. You know, I'm also trying to... Most officers come into this work thinking that they're going to be serving the community and they're going to be doing a public service and they're going to be doing a good job. Uh, none of us expect that we're going to, you know, well, some, some know they're coming in to do nefarious behaviors and they're trying, they're going to be come in crooked. They come in like that because they grow up in a crime family and sometimes the cartel and other um, gangs send in the younger, the younger kids to do that so they can be a mule and run in drugs and phones and things to people that want it. But anyway, so this inmate hates everybody. He hates all officers. He's just confrontational all the time, calling you the B word and the C word. And here she come again, or here he come again, on and on it goes. It's basically emotional abuse from, the, from out the gate. They're just always acting that way. And I just ignore them, and I do hold them their feet to the fire when it comes to certain things. There were some inmates that gave me a hard time about having their IDs on the locker. Look, that's policy. You're supposed to have your ID on the locker all the times. If you're if you're in your cell, you put it on your door. If you're in a dorm, you put it on your locker at the end, so officers know who's there. If you're not there, you put it on your shirt, so we can identify you if you get beat down or beat up or have a heart attack on the yard, we need to know who you are. So we can relay that information to administrators on, you know, in the ambulance or whatever. So we can deal with you appropriately. It's difficult to deal with it when we don't even know who you are, right? So that's just policy. And oftentimes uh, inmates take it personal that we're just following policy. And it doesn't help that some officers are lazy and don't want the confrontation. And so they choose not to have the confrontation. They choose to just keep walking and ignore those kind of infractions. But to me, those infractions were serious infractions because certain infractions like that, if um, they're up to nefarious activities, it could easily come back on me and get me in trouble. So I'm trying to keep myself out of trouble by following certain basic policies that keep me out of trouble. Um, there's also uh, number two, inmate number two type, the coward. I couldn't stand these inmates. They're cowards. They wait until you walk past their bunk and they call you the B word or they say stuff behind your back when you're doing count. They're always running their mouth, but they never want to say it to your face. So I would come right straight out and say, say it to my face. Why do you wait till I walk behind you? Why do you wait till you're behind me? Why do you wait till I walk to the end of the run for you to run your mouth and be talking smack? Because you're a coward. I would tell him, you're a coward. 
Come on out and say it. If you want to come say something to me, come out and talk to me. If you want to talk to me in front of the inmates, let's do it. If you want to talk in the hallway, let's do it. Whatever your problem is with me, let's deal with it. You know? But they're cowards. They don't come forward. So every now and then, you catch it. You catch who it is. You'll know who it is. But oftentimes, uh, they're cowards. And they just run their mouth behind your back when you're not, when you can't identify who they are. Some inmates will say, well, yeah, well, you'll just write them a ticket if you find out who they are. Well, not necessarily. I don't write tickets over little stupid comments and everything. You can't write tickets about everything. But if you got a problem with me, some, some people just have a problem because you got a badge on. You know, because you're in the uniform. Because you're on the other side. Because they see you as a bad guy because you're a cop because they're up to no good. But we're not cops. We're just trying to keep the custody and care of the inmates. And we work for their safety too. The cowards and the angry inmate. We work for all of them. We work for the community. We protect the assholes and we protect the guys that are not. We protect all of them from each other and from themselves. And they just don't, they don't get it. They don't realize they don't think about that. They're just got one, a one train thought and a mindset. And these, these guys that are cowards that uh, run their mouth and stuff, talk smack about you, you know, when you're walking down the run. There was a few times an inmate, an inmate had said a few things and I said, you know, say it to my face, why are you being a coward? You're running your mouth in front of all your buddies, but you're doing it behind my back. If you got something to say, say it right now and then they come up to me later and tell me you know uh i'm sorry whatever i says you know what you need to do is you need to apologize in front of the run because you said that stuff in front of everybody to get attention so i think if you're going to apologize and back down now then you ought to do it in front of everybody just the same way you started it with me right but um some of them did a couple of them did go in front of the run and apologize so that's how that went. But anyway, so that's number two, the coward. Number three is the lookout. So there's always a lookout in every pod, in every building, in every run. Now, these inmates are that are lookouts, they are assigned by other inmates in their race or whatever. Somebody has to be always there. They're the, they're the ones that don't turn out for chow. They're the ones that, you know, it's not always the same guy every time. But they're the ones with the, their heads on a swivel. They're always looking and seeing what's going on. When inmates are coming and going, they're making sure that the thieves aren't stealing from other inmates. Going into cells that they don't belong in, snooping around. They also make sure that officers... You know, aren't if 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 I go in a uh, a run, I have a right to do a random search at any time I choose. But if I decide to go into a cell, and uh, maybe a sergeant told me, a lot of times sergeants or supervisors will call you and say, hey, or even COs will say, hey, search cell ten. Uh, I don't always ask why. I don't know why they tell me to go cell search dog ten. I'm gonna go search dog ten. And then they'll report back to the pod or that inmate in Dog 10. Hey, um, Corrections Mama was in here today and, she, you know, she searched your house. So then they come up mad and, were you searching my house? Well, a supervisor told me to do it. Or I had whatever reason. I really don't even have to give him an answer. But usually I did because I wasn't the type that would just go search an inmate's house for no reason. I usually had a reason. Sometimes it's because they're acting crazy. Sometimes it's because they were very nasty. Sometimes it's because the supervisor told me to. Sometimes another staff member had information and wanted to tell me to. And sometimes it was just because we had to do, they would tell us, go do four random searches in building dog, building two dog, dog runs. So we, we would. But anyway, so that's, uh, that's who the lookout is, and that's pretty much what their job is, is to report back to the heads on the bill in the run and other inmates on any goings on 
in the brun or the building. Um, number four. Number four is the youngster. You know, the youngster comes in. He's a first time inmate. He is, you can see. You can pretty much see that they don't know what's going on. They don't know what to expect. Sometimes they'll tell you. Sometimes they'll tell you they're scared and they're nervous. And, uh, you know, they come in. You get them a bedroll. You get them their hygiene and stuff. And uh, they're vulnerable. They're impressionable. These inmates, we kind of keep an eye out for them. We, we watch them a little closer because they're about to get extorted. You know what I mean? And, um... Uh, First thing you do is you see these other inmates come up to him, offer to help him, show him how to make his bed all nice and tight. Try to offer him if he needs anything. Trust me, nothing is for free in prison. They're offering him something, but he's going to have to pay them back somehow. And they also um, will exploit the youngster, the new guy. They're going to exploit them. They almost always do or try to. So, uh, we always try to keep an eye out for, for that guy. And we try to figure out, he's just trying to, the inmate's just trying to figure out how all this works and try to find a balance where he doesn't offend anybody. And they're usually kind of timid. They're quiet. They don't always want to say much. They try to act cool in front of the inmates once they start getting more comfortable they try to, try to act cool. Some of them um, are jerks to the officers because they want they don't want anyone to think they're a snitch. So they act out to on you because they're trying, especially if it's in a it's in the run in front of a lot of inmates, like during count time when everybody is there, they're gonna act out and treat you like dirt because they are trying to make an impression on the other inmates to let them know that they're not snitch. And you know. They want to show their loyalty to fellow felons. So that's the youngster. Then number five. Inmate number five would be the mule. All right. We call them mules. Inmates call them mules. They may have other names for them. A mule is exactly what it sounds like. These guys move stuff. They move things from one building to another, from one pod to another, for for other for all kinds of reasons. It could be anything. It could be hygiene. It could be a drug debt. It could be food. It could be, you know, honey buns. It could be paperwork. It could be a message. It could be something sent from one inmate to another one to pay off a debt or to maybe an inmate asked him, hey, um, I'm really short. Can I borrow this and I'll get you later with this? So they're always moving stuff. They're always trying to get out the building. They always got shit in their pockets. They always got a reason for it, a reason for having this or that or whatever. And it's not that they're not allowed to bring a honey bun out of pod I don't care to bring a honey bun out of the pod but they're just constantly moving goods for many many different reasons and this is their hustle you know if they move certain amount of stuff or a message or whatever they get paid for it sometimes they're just told to do it because for their race if it's a message or something like that so that's the guy that we call the mule and usually they're also pod porters Pod porters and building porters, they try to go in and out of the building, and um, especially in lockdown, all they do is move stuff. Inmate give him something, and he takes it over to the, another door, and that door gives him something, and he takes it over here. He's just back and forth. He's not cleaning. Sometimes they do, but a lot of times they're not cleaning. When they start doing that stuff, I would just tell them lockdown. Just lockdown, because you're not cleaning. You're not doing your job. All you're doing is your hustle, and, you know, I don't have time to put up with that, so I just make them go lock down if if it's possible, if I can. So that's five inmate types that you're going to come across. 
and uh, I'll do another video on another five. There's a lot of different types. So uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. Please like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, make comments, and ask questions. If you ask certain questions, and I think it'll be a good video, oftentimes you'll see a video pop up that answers your question because that's what I want to do. I want to answer y'all's question and help you out give you like you're you're actually giving me ideas also for content and some questions make good content and some don't <laughs> so please like subscribe share and comment thank you